Hello, family and friends. How are you doing today? I welcome you to this wonderful day and also to this wonderful live broadcast, encouraging you to join me as we seek and spread knowledge. And it's going to be great today. It's going to be wonderful today. So I, went, I want to share with us what I titled Search and Research to Know or Search to Know, however you put it. There is need for us to search, to find out the whole truth. There is need for us to do research, to find out the whole truth without giving up. Don't give up because we are in the age of information. Ignorance is a choice. If you choose to die ignorance, then that's your choice. I can't force you to know. But what I will continue doing is calling you to wake up wake up do your own research search to find out the truth don't just accept what they taught you don't just accept what you believe as the truth and to, uh, this morning i will walk us through both in the bible and outside bible so good morning mr Charles. so uh, i want you to uh, you know, go, uh, flow with me because it's going to be great. Uh, let me read a place in the Bible first before I um, continue with about searching. The, the Proverbs chapter 25 verse 2. He said, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. What type of silly glow God is that? Why is he concealing a matter from people? He's supposed to make everything bare. To people you're supposed to make everything easy why is it always hard for you to serve this god to worship this god to pray to this god everything is hard he keep concealing stuff but remember it's people that put it there people that created that god they say it is the glory of god to conceal a matter are you happy when your children are ignorant and you don't want to tell them the truth you don't want to reveal it to them why is God always hiding things? Deuteronomy 29, 29 said the same thing. He said the hidden things belong to the Lord. The revealed things belong to us, his children, and uh, all that shit. Why should a God who loves people conceal knowledge from them? Why should a God who loves people conceal a matter from them? He said, oh, they cannot handle it. What, what are you saying they cannot handle it? He is the one they said that made them. If he's the, their creator, he's supposed to show them love. When you are hiding something from somebody, that is not a sign of love. You have seen many relationships, many marriages have been broken or destroyed because of hiding uh, stuff. You have seen some men that hide their true self, borrow stuff to go and marry a woman, and when the woman found out, she, she divorced him. Even when her family say, no, you right, say, I'm leaving. This guy lied to me. I asked him several times. He lied to me. He lied to everyone around me. And I can't continue with this. Friends have hidden certain things from their friends and they cause their relationship. So why would God be concealing things from people? If you say that God is love, that God loves you, Remember what Jesus, what they said Jesus said to his disciples in, um, in John chapter 15. He said, I call you no longer servants, but what? Friends, because friends make everything known to each other. That's what makes a friend, friend. A friend that is concealing something from you is not a friend. Why did they call Abraham a friend of God? Okay, when he God went to destroy the Sodom of Gomorrah according to the Bible. He said, Abraham is my friend. I will not conceal anything from him. Do you get the point I'm, 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 I'm showing you? You say you have a relationship with God. You say you, 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 maybe your God is your friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He called me friend. How can God, God call you friend, yet you are ignorant? He's hiding things from you, concealing matter from you. You say God created you. I ask you, what was the date that God created you? You don't know. But God say, call on me. I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you know not. You don't supposed to be ignorant of anything about God or about things in life if you believe in God who is almighty, who is all-knowing, and who is everywhere. 
God supposed to know the date he created you, even if you don't know. The day, uh, ask God for uh, to give you the date of all the things they say that happen in the world, or in the Bible, or in the in the Quran, or in Torah. Let God give you that he cannot. But men put it, he said, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, because they want you to remain ignorant. They tell you God hide it for a reason. You don't question God. Any God you cannot question does not exist. If God exists, you can question him. You can question your father. Can't you question your living father? You can question your dead father. If your father is dead, he's dead. You can question him. But if your father is alive, no matter what, even if your father has bodyguards, you, will, you don't care. You will go through them to ask your father questions. Because you know it's your father. That blood speaks through in, in, in both of you. Say it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings. That's the part I love so much. And that's what I want to talk about kings. Because Africans are kings and queens. <laughs> Although the religion of Christianity, the religion of Islam, the religion of uh, Judaism, they hate queens. They, that's why their book is full of kings. God is what? King of kings. What happened to queens? Their God is he. All their God is he. There's no she. There's no goddess. But our ancestors honored gods and goddesses. Their own ancestors. Not imaginary beings. Because they know they are, they were, and they are still gods and goddesses. Kings and queens. He said... But the glory of kings is to search out a matter. Why are you not searching out that matter that consigns God, that consigns everything they taught you, that faith, that belief? It is time you begin to search it out. Hey, Michael, thank you. <laughs> oh yeah, that's my son, Michael, my son, my Jamaican son. I tell him that I am his father. I'm every everybody from Caribbean, every African American, I'm, I'm their father because I am African. We are they are our children. So join me to welcome Michael Barrett. He's a good friend and a good co-worker too. So Michael, thank you for fulfilling. At least you show me you are a man because I talk I thought uh discussed this with you earlier. So we are kings and queens. We're supposed to make our time to search out a matter. Not just whatever anybody say, we take it. Somebody tell you God created heaven and earth, you believe. Search out the matter to find out that there are many theories, there are many myths about creation. Some people believe uh, there was a, pre, a, a goddess that, that, that uh, uh, spilled out water. And that's how creation began to happen. It is no longer time you said, oh, you don't have access. No, you have search engine, like Google. In Google, your religion is in Google too. So those people that tell you everything is not in Google, they are like this. They know why they're telling you that they don't want you to do their own research. They don't want you to find the truth. They want you to search on their own site. They want you to remain in their own boss, where they cripple you, where they make you, you know, lesser than yourself. Because that's what ignorance does. Ignorance makes you lesser than yourself. Knowledge puts you where you're supposed to be and begin to arm for more. He said kings, kings, kings. Is, is, so it is the glory of kings to search out a matter. So slaves don't search. Slaves don't do research. They don't care because they're slaves. Everything the slave master said, they believe it. They don't want to search it. They want to. They don't want to research it. They tell you the Bible is the word of God. Then they fight. Okay, have you searched that word of God? The best cure and the only cure for Christianity is reading your Bible. If you can spend your time to read your Bible very well without having the Holy Spirit idea, without having any inspiration idea, just reading your Bible with your common sense, you will flee from Christianity naturally. You will find out it's full of lies. Good morning. 
Slaves don't do, don't do research. It's kings. He said kings. It is the glory of the kings to search out a matter. Slaves don't search. Slaves are under slave master. Whatever slave master say, they, they do. So slaves are believers. Believers are slaves. They don't care to search anything. Tell them, the Bible says, they'll believe you. So, the Lord, for, so far you say you are, you are speaking in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how you twist the Bible. It doesn't matter what you say the Bible say. They will echo, Amen. <laughs> of course. Okay. <laughs> Where is this nigga? I was sharing with Mike before I continue. Last night, even before the live broadcast, because when I come from work, I work 3 to 11. So when I was coming to work, I saw a package at my door. I didn't know it was mine. I thought maybe it belongs to other people. So I, oh, I, I, I checked the name. It's my name. Wow. I open it. It's a Nike sneakers. Wow. I said, <laughs> I never ordered it. I was, last Saturday, I went shopping with my daughter. So we bought everything. We did not forget anything. So I said, I didn't know how I get this. So I, I take the picture, the picture sent to my daughter. She says, it's good. Okay. So today I was sharing with Michael. I said, that's what my ancestors has done for me. I share with my coworkers. I say, praise my ancestors. <laughs> I said, this is the real miracle. My ancestors know that I need sneakers. I want to go to Nigeria. So they sent me sneakers. I'm, I'm not lying. I never ordered any sneakers from a, it's a, from a, um, a famous uh, footwear. They send it to me. I don't know who did that. I don't know how it comes. But I saw my name on it. I opened it. I wore it to work today. And show them. So, and I was saying testimony time. Like those people that believe in testimony. I said, because this is what happened. Nobody tell me that buying anything for me or anything. But that's what I received. And I, I attribute it to my ancestors, not to imaginary God, anything, because I have one blood with my an ancestors. They know my need. If you know what your children need, you will provide for them, right? Or you say it is God that provided for me. <laughs> so that means God support what I'm saying. Jesus support what I'm saying. So you need to wake up and begin to do your own research. I did my own research before I come to the what I'm saying today. I used to preach God of Israel. I used to preach Christianity. I used to preach Jesus. I used to preach heaven. I used to preach hell. I used to preach Titan. I used to preach and practice everything that Jesus said in the Bible. I was not joking. I was doing it sincerely. I was a minister of the gospel. But when I found out the truth, I stopped ascribing my effort and sources to imaginary being. And I stopped giving to somebody that say, believe his God or her God is almighty. If your God can provide you your need, you don't need me. Don't tell me your God will use me to bless you. No, let your God bless you directly. Your God don't need to walk through me. Let your God walk with you. He said, Abraham is your father. God said to Abraham, Walk with me and be thou perfect. It's in your Bible. So walk with God. Let God perfect his will in your life. And stop going to men, begging, make, begging men for money or working for money after you say it is your God that is doing it or that has done it. So stop being a slave. If you are a believer, you are a slave. And slaves don't do research. Slaves don't search. It's kings that search. Are you a king? I am a king. King shared. What, what, how about you, woman? You are a queen. Do research. You are a royalty. You are not a sinner. You are not unworthy. There is no power that can stop you. There is no power that can limit you if you dare to search to find out the truth. Let me, let's see the definition of a search. Oh, let me start with research. Research means careful study of a given subject, field, or problem undertaking to discover facts or principles. Do your own research. 
about your religion, about your faith, about whatever they taught you, even what your parents taught you. You have to make out that quality time. Research is an act or period of such study. Begin to study. I told you I devour the Bible. I read many Christian books. Written by even dead authors. People that books written many years before my father was born. I read so, such books. Just to gain knowledge. To know for myself. Not to say our church say. Not to say my parents say. Not to say my, my pastor say. Not to say my church say. No. That I can stand and say. And when I make a pose by myself, I can defend it. Even no matter who comes, I will begin to show the person the, what I posted and I, I give them evidence. How about search? Let's see search, recent search. Yeah, well, I, I like the way search put it also. Mm -hmm. Search says is to move around in go through or look through in an effort to find something. And when I was reading this, the, the, the picture that comes to my mind is when you want to buy a car. You go around it. <laughs> you go around inside the car. You go through whatever. You say, where is the jack? Where is the uh, spare tire? Where is this? Where is that? You look through everything. Why? You are making an effort to find something that it is as that person said the car is. Start it. Uh -huh. Okay, you check this, you check that. Where is this? Where is that? Why is this like this? You are searching to find something so that you don't regret buying that car tomorrow. That's how it's supposed to be. Why are you searching to find out the truth about what they tell you? They preach to you. You, be, you just believe it without searching to find something uh, that, that proves that is true. Search is also to make a careful examination or investigation of something, to prove something or somebody. Search also is to seek data matching a word. To seek data matching a word, phrase, or pattern of characters in. In the law, it is to examine a person or property for the purpose of discovering evidence of a crime. Have you done this because of, I mean, by, by, uh, for your faith or for your religion? Now what he says again, search is to search a place or space in order to find something, to make a careful, uh, like I said, but so, to use a search engine, to use a search engine or other software to find any data matching a particular pattern. It is no longer the time you say, okay, I have to, I must travel to Ghana to find something. You can use a search engine like Google. There are other search engine, Yahoo. You can use them to find something about what they taught you. Stop allowing them to limit you to the Bible dictionary, Bible reference, or the Bible. You have to go beyond them. Many people has experienced what you're experiencing today, and many people has documented them. You have to go for those documented. I mean, historical documents, documented facts, evidence. If, it, if there is no evidence, don't continue believing it. You have to make a search for evidence. Evidence is very important. Faith is believing something without evidence. Because they define to, for you or they tell you in the Bible that faith itself is a substance. How can faith be substance? It is a substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. That is crap. 
it cannot be evidence. Faith is not evidence. Fact is evidence. Get the fact. So have you searched to find out the truth? They taught you from your childhood. That thing you said, this is the truth. Have you searched to find out if it's the truth? Or you just love to remain under growth? You just love to remain a child. I'm a child of God. When will you become a son of God? When you will become a matured son of God? You keep be being a child of God. Believing th things without evidence. Children don't do research. Children believe everything or anything you tell them without evidence. Tell children you will buy them car tomorrow. They say, okay. Tell adults you will buy car tomorrow. You know how many times they will ask you, hey, hey stop pulling my leg, stop playing. They know you are playing. You know what it means to buy car for somebody? But tell a child, I will buy the whole world for you. Yeah, daddy, daddy. Yeah, I love you, daddy. Is it not the same thing believers are doing when they read the promises of God in the Bible? When they read the word of Jesus in the Bible? Yeah, amen, amen, I claim it. I receive it, I receive it, it will happen. Yeah, I will not suffer anymore. And year in, year out, they keep suffering. Come on, wake up, my people. You need to search, even to find God. It is in your Bible. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13. Listen. It is not me that is asking you to search to find God. God himself said that. But your preachers will not tell you that. They tell you he's praying and fasting. No. Hear what God said in his book that his creators <laughs> created, <laughs> or his creators wrote. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, he said, And you will seek me and find me. That is God speaking in the Bible. And you who believe in God will seek God and find God. He said, When? When you search for me with all your heart. That's why I ask, all these years, no believer, no preacher, no apostle, have such God with all their heart to find God, then they say you cannot find God. And when they write, wrote about their Jesus, in John chapter 1 verse 18, he said, no one has seen God at any time. He said, except, that's what John said, except the only begotten who is in his bosom. Which bosom? Has your sheet seen you? <laughs> He said only one, only one from his bosom. That's his offspring. That's the only one that I've seen him. Are you not offspring of God? You are offspring of God. God created you, so you're supposed to know God, supposed to see God. He said, and he said, he has come to declare him. We don't need anyone to come to declare God to us. We don't, I don't need anyone to come and declare my father to me. I know my father. I've seen my father. The only times anyone can declare eh, my father to me is if maybe my father died before I was born. And he tells somebody something to tell me when, I, I, I will be, I, when I'm, I'm born. Then the person will come and declare them to me. But if my father is alive, I don't need anyone to come and declare my father to me. I don't need the firstborn to come and tell me about my father. I want to know my father. I want to see my father. But you hang up in believing because you love being slave. You are a slave that loves his chain. Chain of faith. Chain of belief. Chain of religion. Chain of hope. Chain of love. But the only thing, the only power that can deliver you, destroy those chains, is called knowledge. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is the greatest when you know Especially when you know yourself, you begin to live better. You have to search to know about Adam and Eve. There are many stories about creation, about people existing before the creation of the God of the Bible and the story of Adam and Eve. If Adam and Eve existed at any time, their bone would have been found. 
But the more they dig to find Adam and Eve, they keep finding the Af African ancestors who existed millions of years before Adam and Eve. Do your own research. You have Google today. You cannot find the truth in your Bible because the Bible is a work of fiction. There's no truth in the Bible. That's why they tell you that Jesus is the truth. In the How can Jesus be the truth? We are, when truth has been existing before Jesus came, didn't Jesus tell you that he did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill them? Is the law the truth? It existed before Jesus. You have to find out about Adam and if never existed. Do your own research. Also, do your own search out to find out about Noah's flood. You know what it means to have a flood in the world? You know what it means to have a flood to, to swallow everyone? They stole all this nonsense from Africans and changed them and gave us Noah's flood. And you believe that? A silly God who cannot fix who he created and begin to drown them. And when you're talking, you're talking against abortion? What? You don't, no believer in God, the, the God of Noah have any right to speak against abortion. The God that drown children, drown everyone on the face of the earth, except eight souls, you believe. If God, if you believe that God created Adam and Eve as first man and woman, why did he have to take eight, 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 eight souls after the flood? He would have started another creation. <laughs> but it's a story. They started with one man, one, one woman. Then after that, it's four women, four men, four women. You see how they change it? That's why when you see after the flood, it's another thing God begin to say, I will not do this, I will not do that. Stories of creation, different in the Bible. One Bible they tell you is the word of God. And the same people will tell you God never changes. Why in the Bible their God changes? The, 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 if you don't believe what I'm saying, okay, your Bible is evidence that God changes because there is Old Testament and New Testament. If God does not change, there is no need of Old and New Testament. It is just testament of God. But when you carry the Bible, you think you are carrying the truth. You are carrying a lie. Even the cover of your Bible tell you that New King James Version or King James Version, it has nothing to do with God. It is men like you and I who are who we are greedy, who we are wicked, that compile, wrote and compiled those books you call the Bible, Holy Bible, Holy Quran, Holy Torah. All of them are corrupt. All of them are unholy. There's nothing about holiness for, uh, when, when it comes to them or concerning them. How about Abraham? Ooh. Do you know that Job, according to Bible story, Job existed before Abraham? You believe the story of Job. And when you suffer, you quote Job. Why you never have 1% of, of what Job had? Have you seen the gravesite of Job or Abraham? Particularly Abraham, the way people, this Abrahamic religion like Muslims, Christians, and Jewish, the way they exalt this Abraham, somebody should have seen his gravesite. Don't tell me you just believe Abraham is, existed. And the person that tell you Abraham is their father, they don't have the bones of Abraham. They don't have uh, the gravesite of Abraham. You said they are born. Okay. Listen, remember Abraham went to Egypt, right? He ended in Canaan, right? According to Bible. When Joseph died in Egypt, what did he tell his brethren before he died? He said, make sure you carry my bone to the promised land. And when they were departed, uh, departed, they carried his bones. Where is the bones of Joseph today? <laughs> Have you searched to find out this Abraham you're talking about? Like I said yesterday, all this nonsense about God of Abraham. No, it was the father of Abraham that started the journey to Canaan land. It is not going to read it. Genesis chapter 11. His father was the one, not God, but they put God there. Abraham, Abraham, okay. Leave your father's country, all that nonsense. 
A God that leave, asks you to leave your father's land uh, to go and give you another people's land, that God is wicked. How about the 12 tribes of Israel? Israel have 13 children. But you believe God chose the 12 tribes. He chose men, not women. God, Jacob had 12 sons and one daughter. Nobody cares about the daughter of Jacob. All we talk about is uh, children of Israel. Children of Israel. Children of Israel are 13, not 12 tribes. It's supposed to be 13 tribes. And in Kemet, or in Ethiopia, as I speak, they have that 13 months calendar. You wonder, how? why do you have 12 months calendar too? <laughs> I think my Hebrew calendar is also 13, not 12. Because that's where we came from. We come from Kemet. We are not West Africa. Like West Africa was our backyard. You know, where, where we don't do anything. It was just empty land like that. We don't know where we came from because they hid this. Is, they stole our history, hid it from us. They even destroyed it. How about the God of Israel you're talking about? You read wonderful things that God of Israel have done in the Bible and you believe it. And holding it so dearly to your life that you can hate me, you can kill me be defending that God. The God that says is not the God of the uh, mountain or God of the valley, it's God of everywhere, right? Just, Judges chapter 1 verse 19. He could not defeat people that live in the valley because they have iron chariots. Iron chariots, God could not defeat them. You think your God can handle nuclear weapon today? And you are still waiting for your Lord and Savior Jesus to return on white horse? <laughs> Is this time an error? Can't you see that that Jesus never existed for the fact he's still in the book of Revelation and you are waiting for your Lord to return on white horse? Unless you say it's a spiritual thing. White horse. No, it's not white horse. It's white jade. White private jet. <laughs> no, you know, it's the white cloud, right? He says white cloud. What about black, black cloud? In, in Exodus chapter, chapter 20, verse 21, God was in the thick darkness. Why would Jesus return on a white cloud? <laughs> because they, pro, they, 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 promote, they promoted and still promoting white supremacy. Christianity is white supremacy. Islam is white supremacy. Judaism is white supremacy. Forget all that politics that are playing with it. Say Christians are killing Muslims. It's the ignorant ones, especially the Africans, who are ignorant of themselves. I'm a Christian. I'm a Muslim. I hate Muslims. I hate, I, I will kill Christians. You are killing each other. They are still using religion to keep you in that mental slavery, to keep you divided and conquered. Because they know when you unite, they cannot stop you. How about Jesus Christ and his 12 apostles? Where are their grave sites? You say we go, when you go to Jerusalem, you will see the tomb of Jesus. According to the Bible, Jesus did not have any tomb. He was buried in another man's tomb. And in Israel, the way according to the Bible, it is not one person that is buried in a warm tomb. It's a family. It's a family thing. People, the person that they go and open it and put you there. Close it. See, they roll the stone away and put stone back. You say Jesus ascended to heaven. Okay, let me give that to you. But if you ascended to heaven, so you're supposed to be descending every time. You're supposed to see him. In other words, he's not dead. If Jesus is not dead, why are you waiting until the last day for you to see Jesus? Read Luke chapter 24, 36 to 43 to see that Jesus is not a spirit. Jesus is flesh and bones, just like me. You can touch me, that's the same way you can touch Jesus. You can embrace me, that's the same way you can embrace Jesus. And if you're a woman, you can kiss me, that's the same way you can kiss Jesus. But you can't do that. You still say, I love Jesus. Jesus is my personal love. And say, Jesus is my best friend. Hey. That's an imaginary friend. 
and adults with imaginary friends are stupid. Stop being stupid. When you say Jesus is your Lord, you are calling you a safe slave. When you say Jesus is your best, best friend, you are calling yourself stupid because you believe or have imaginary friends. Have you seen the thumb of any apostle? <laughs> you can't see them. At least they say when Stephen was, was stoned to death, right? The apostles gathered together and buried him. Where is that gravesite? You can't see it. Somebody always say, yeah, everything is not recorded in the Bible. Of course, I know that. <laughs> There's no truth recorded in the Bible. No truth. No single truth recorded in the Bible. If you know the, 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 the history or what happened before the Bible was written, you will know there's no truth in the Bible. They stole from the ancient people, plagiarized it, and they wrote it. And you think it's the truth. If all things are not written in the Bible, then throw it away. You don't need the Bible. In the first place, if you have the Spirit of God, and if God is alive, you don't need the Bible. Let God speak to you directly. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you all things, even the things to come. You don't need the Bible. There's no reason for you to have Bible, except you're religious, except you're a believer who don't care to research. But those of us that have read the Bible and we have researched it, we find out it's just junk. I have junk emails. I don't care about them. The real email I check is the one in my inbox. The junk that's where I see many males. I don't go to them. These people lie to us about everything. Why did they teach us or taught us about Jesus, but not about our ancestors? Especially the, the man called Imhotep. The world first multi genius. Today, when I say, they say, hey, uh, first female, a uh, black woman to become a pilot or to do this. I say, no, we are first everything. We are the original. These people that we think they are the first, they are the last. But they put in the Bible, they say the first shall be last and the last shall be first. That's what, that's what white supremacy is all about. Making the first last and making the last first. Today, even Africans believe that is he Hippocrates is the is the father of medicine. Why he learned from Africans? Apprentice now is the father of the same work of the same uh, uh, the, the very um, the, the very thing he learned from his master. He is the father of it. But they taught, they taught us about Jesus. Our parents know Jesus. They don't, they don't know their own ancestors. Our parents know about Israel. They don't know about Kemet. And that's the same ignorance they transfer to us. And most of us still want to die ignorant. No. You have to refuse. You have to say, no, I'm not dying ignorant. Check my wall. You see, I, I shared that post about Im Imhotep. Why did they teach us about Jesus, but not about Imhotep, the father of medicine, the first man to build something, to build a building with block? He built pyramid stage. It's not white man. He was not a white man. He's somebody like you and I, Africans, our ancestors. But they never teach us that. We value life. We weren't going about trying to destroy our village because they don't believe what you believe. And somebody will tell you your ancestors were killing each other. You believe that lie. In my tribe, we call human being Mando, Mado. The beauty of life. When you see your fellow human beings, you see yourself. But these enemies came and brought division among us. Hate. You have to hate yourself, hate your loved ones to be disciple of Jesus. And that is somebody you say you love. Somebody that wants you to hate yourself, hate your, your family members. According to Luke chapter 14 verse 26. That is the person you say is your Lord and Savior. Fuck him. If you exist. 
They don't want you to be like your ancestors because they know your ancestors were great. Your ancestors were kings and queens, gods and goddesses. They tell you they were worshipping other gods. No, they were worshipping themselves. Since you want to use that term worship. I rather worship myself than worship any imaginary God. I rather worship myself than worship any fictional character called Jesus Christ. If I worship myself, that means I love myself and I take good care of myself. But they want me to hate myself for Jesus. Fuck them. They, they refuse to teach you about your ancestors to keep you ruthless. To keep you ignorant of yourself. When you don't know your ancestors, you don't know yourself, no, no matter your level of education, no matter what you become in this world, you say you are the president, you are anything, inventor, you are nothing if you don't know yourself. Because you will still die like slave. You will still die like nothing. But when you know yourself, like myself, you will no longer be afraid of death. Michael asked me that. He said, what are you saying? You're not making money out of it? You know, afraid of, are you not afraid of dying? I said, me. I'm not afraid of dying. I mean it. I'm going to Nigeria next month. They want to kill me. The truth is this. They cannot kill me. They are killing me is for my own good. It's for my own benefit. Because the, the door, death is a door that opens for me to the next level. And I'm sharing the truth to people. I have not asked anyone to kill himself. I'm asking you to know yourself, know your ancestors. Then you are angry because you believe in the stupid God of Israel called Yahweh or Jehovah or Allah. You believe in that God. Also, you believe in Jesus. That's why you are against me. You want to come and kill me. Do it. But I know that all of them are cowards. They're only looking for opportunity to say, yeah, you see, he died in accident. That's God. You see, he was killed. That's God's punishment. They are cowards. All of them that are running their mouth on Facebook, when they see me face to face, the men among them, their pennies will drop. They can never say anything. Only the glory upon me will destroy them. They know that. Or anywhere, anywhere I, I appear, yeah, you cannot intimidate me. I will, my look will intimidate you. Even if you come to do me harm, you say, how are you doing, sir? Good, good afternoon, sir. Good morning, sir. Of course. <laughs> and I'm not joking about that. All of them running their mouth, they are cowards. If they are not cowards, Nigeria would have changed. They are cowards. When they hear one shot of gun, pop, all of them begin to run. But they want to see or they want to hear bad things happen to you then they will say, it is their God that have done it. God will punish. That's all they know. God mess up. Nonsense. Let God mercy come upon you and change your life and your country. That mercy is far from you and you keep invoking God's mercy. I'm praying for you. Stop wasting your time and your life in prayers. If your prayer works, Nigeria will, will not still be in darkness. Mosquito will not still be giving you malaria like no man business. If God exist and he has mercy on you already. You won't be suffering the way. You, the, you keep denying, I'm not suffering. For the fact you are a Nigerian, living in, in, in Nigeria, come on, suffering is your middle name. You cannot deny it. it even the rich ones among you in Nigeria is suffering. That's why a rich man we, we go and pay security people to, sec, to, to guard him. If you are not, if, if you are free, if your God is alive, why are you going with police escort? You are afraid of dying. Your pastors, your men of God are afraid of dying. And you telling me you are not suffering. Never take light for months, for weeks. You don't have light. Then when you, when you recharge your phone in a, your neighbor's plant generator or the, from your own house, you begin to come alive. Hey, God is good. God has done many things, many good things for me. You are stupid saying that. Say the truth. Tell yourself the truth. I think tomorrow I will speak on that. Tell yourself the truth. Don't die ruthless nor ignorant. Do your own research. And this is the wonderful word I want to share with you. But let me close it with this reading. Oh, 
with this about um, Imhotep. Oh man, I turned off my phone. Okay, let's see. I made a post earlier about Imhotep, which I was saying. Okay, my phone is off. So maybe I will, I will repost it again. I will just but do your own research. I'm asking you, I'm begging you, do research about Imhotep. It's very important for you to do that research, to find out the truth about yourself. Okay, do research about Kemet. Let us begin to find our root again. We have been rootless for so long. It is time for us to be rooted again. Let us put ourselves back to our root and see how great, even greater, we become. Peace.